I added a fully functional jetpack to my Unity game, and here's how things went. Hello everyone, Fuelvin here. So in the past few videos, I've been working on my game Hobo Simulator, which was originally one of my most famous games on Scratch. And since a lot of you liked watching me work on this game, I decided to add even more features to it. But before we get started, this video is sponsored by Outstandly. Have you ever made a game where you wish you could have someone make all the art, but not only that, make it exactly how you want it? Because I sure have. Well, look no further because Outstandly provides you with personalized art, assets, and even UI so that your game looks amazing and you can just focus on development. It's super easy to get started, you can just simply share your game idea and goal, and Outstandly then makes a personalized offer for you. The team is super nice and easy to work with, and you have the possibility to give feedback and ask for corrections anytime during the process. So if you want some great looking art for any game that you're making, even a game on Scratch, then be sure to click the link in the description down below and visit Outstandly. Anyways, back to the video. So to start off, I thought that currently there wasn't much structure, because even though it's an open world game and you can do anything you want, the only goal you really have currently is to enter the Gentleman's Club. So I decided to create an in-game task system where the player can select tasks to do for rewards, sort of like minigames or quests. So first off, I drew up a post office and plopped it into the game. Next, I wanted the post office to be a place where the player can enter and select tasks to do. So I created a bulletin board, which will serve as the in-game task list, and did some coding to add in the player and bulletin interaction sequence. After coding up the bulletin board, I created the inside of the post office, which was easy to do because I could just copy the inside for the store and just change a few things. So now if you enter the post office, you see a bulletin board, and if you interact with it, then some tasks pop up. As you see here, we have a keep our city clean, lost dog, and bodyguard needed tasks. For now, I worked on the keep our city clean task, and I made it so that if you select the task, then you can see more details. In this case, you have to pick up 10 pieces of litter on the ground, and then you get $15. So now I have to implement the actual task. So I created a trash spawner and made it so that it spawns 10 pieces of trash randomly along the sidewalk once you accept the task and I can freely change the amount of trash that I want to spawn. For instance, I can make the city turn into a wasteland. Yeah, these people are really messy. But anyways, I wasn't a really big fan of the fact that you could instantly pick up a piece of trash by simply walking over it, so I thought to myself, how can I make picking up trash more difficult? That's when I thought of the idea of making all trash interactable objects, so now whenever you walk over a piece of trash, you don't automatically pick it up, but rather the piece of trash gets highlighted and you have to press the up arrow key to then pick it up. So now I think that makes the trash pickup task a bit more engaging and it fits the overall game a bit better. Now I had the trash task done, but I still had some problems with the bulletin board. One of the problems was that you could effectively spam the trash task over and over again, and that would result in multiple trash tasks being activated at once which led to way too much trash on the ground. So I implemented a fix where the bulletin would say task in progress once you have actually selected a task and prevents you from choosing another task until you have completed that task. Next, I had to add the reward part of the task. So I created a task box image and plopped it into the game. So when you select the pick up trash task, the task box drops down with the task description. Since I eventually want to have a lot of different tasks that the player can choose from, I created my own task manager class. And no, it's not the thing that you open on a Windows computer to force close Google Chrome when it freezes. But anyways, I created a class like that to simplify my code a bit and made it easier to add new tasks in the future. However, after adding in some code, the player didn't get any reward after completing the pickup trash task, which is not good. But after fixing the error, I had a working in-game task system with a trash pickup task, which you can activate and redeem for rewards. After finishing the in-game task system, the most obvious and logical next step for the game was to add a jetpack, of course, because those two are totally related. I started by doing a bit of initial coding on the player just to figure out how the physics would work. And starting off, it was definitely a bit weird. The controls were super sensitive, and the best way I could describe controlling the player was that it was like trying to balance the pencil standing on the palm of your hand. But I decided to solve this issue later, and first created a jetpack for my player and added that into my project. 
However, when I first imported the jetpack image in, it messed up my original player body image, and the player ended up with just a head and limbs. It looks pretty cool in game though, but this video is not the video where I turn my player into Invisible Man, so I gave him back his body and also a jetpack. I did a bit of extra coding, and now you could press Q and equip the jetpack. However, the physics were definitely still wonky and not realistic. Like, imagine you're just one day chilling outside and you see this. But anyways, I made a few iterations to my code, and my jetpack ended up breaking, but in a different way. So now it's spazzing out, which is perfect if my goal was to have a broken jetpack. But I ended up creating a working version of the jetpack. The jetpack had upwards thrust and tilt steering, and yes, I am aware that this version unfortunately does not have rapid 360 degree rotations or mid-air seizures, but it's the most fitting version for my game. After that, I slapped on a particle system onto the jetpack, and now it looks pretty neat. You can fly around, and all of the NPCs just casually ignore the burning hot flames being spewed on their faces. Now, I didn't want the player to be able to have a jetpack right from the get-go, so I made the jetpack a reward for the trash pickup task, which replaced the old $15 reward. And now, once you complete the trash pickup task, you get an awesome jetpack where you can fly around at slightly faster than normal walking speed and also escape cops. Anyways, that's pretty much it for all the changes, so now, gameplay time. Alright, so we are all spawned in, and as usual we have our store, dumpster, and everything else. But today, I'm going to check out this new post office. So I'm going to enter, and inside of here it's pretty simple, but we have a bulletin board. So if I just interact with it, then as you can see we have all of these different tasks. And some of these aren't available right now. As you can see, I cannot select the lost dog task or the bodyguard task. So I'm going to select this keep your city clean task. Okay, so the task is to pick up 10 pieces of litter on the street and we get a jetpack as a reward. All right, so that seems pretty cool. So I'm going to accept the task. Okay, as you see here, we have a task pop up on the top left, but yeah. Okay, so now we have the task, and as you can see, we do have a lot of trash on the ground, so I'm going to pick some up like so. Okay. Alright. That was about, like, I think seven or eight. There's three pieces of trash left on the ground, so I think some are over here. Okay, cool. And as you can see here, we have completed the task. Now I'm going to go back inside of the post office and we can collect our reward. And cool, we got a jetpack. So now um, we can use this by pressing Q. So I'm going to press that. And as you see here, we can fly around like so. Okay, that is pretty cool. Um, but let's also try to beat the game. So. I am going to dumpster dive a bit. Okay, got $4, but someone saw me, so I lost some reputation. Let me dive again. Okay, someone saw me again. Actually, change of plans. I think it's going to be more fun if we try to outrun some cops with the jetpack. So I'm going to go inside of the store and buy a shovel. Okay. Now I have a shovel, and let me just try getting some cops to chase after me, so I'm going to beg to purposely lose reputation. Alright, let me beg one more time. Okay, now we're in a cop chase. So I'm going to press space to attack with the shovel. Alright, oh, okay, I got jailed. Um, that was an accident, but let me just play through the game again. Alright, so I got my jetpack and shovel back. So I'm going to try to lose more reputation and get into a cop chase. Okay, cool. A cop is after me. And I'm going to try to get out of the cop chase. Okay. And now I'm going to try to get more cops on me. So let me just beg again. And this time we can use our awesome jetpack to escape all of the cops like this. Now I'm going to try to get three cops on me, so I'm going to lose more reputation. 
Okay, and now there are three cops, so I'm gonna escape using the jetpack. Cool, they can't catch me. And yeah, that's um, a fun way to try to avoid the cops, which is via the jetpack. So I'm just floating around. And yeah, and that's the entire gameplay of Hobo Simulator thus far. What do you think about all these new additions, and what new features should I add next? Let me know in the comments below. Also, you can try out this game on itch.io, link is in the description below. But anyways, that's it for this video, see ya!